What's up? Welcome back to Ringworm. It's freaking beautiful. Got a fantastic week ahead of me, I believe. Uh, today's the hot day. It's going to be like 76, I think, and the rest of the days are like high 60s, low 70s. Just perfect. So now for the fun part of the shower, get to put in shelves, bench, move some of the old shower stuff in there, and I think I decided that I do want to seal the floor at least. Of course, if I get a brush out, I'm probably just going to continue. You know, oops, I got a little dab on the wall. Might as well do the whole wall. So we'll just see how far it goes. I want to at least seal the, the whole inside of the shower, I guess. There's that pallet that has the uh, old cedar boards on it that I built like two years ago for the old shower. It is kind of green. I mean, I could get the green off. I could bleach it or clean it off, but I'm never going to do that. So why not try putting a little bit of sealer on there? Got these from a secondhand building store. This one was five bucks. This one was... Oh, I guess they were both five bucks. I said three dollars last time, so I was definitely lying. One of these uh, I, I can't bring back to life. And it's all right because it's mahogany, but I don't know if you can see all the chunks in there. That's after a half an hour of stirring and shaking and everything. I think that's been uh, frozen and thawed too many times. This one says semi-solid deck and siding stain. Doesn't that sound perfect? Water repellent, deep penetrating oil, fade resistant. It's got everything. I think just because today's gonna be the warmest day, I'm gonna go in and seal the floor. I think it takes a day or two to dry, which there's no way I'm gonna let it dry for two days. When I have nice weather and I get started on stuff, I just have to go at it, but, but if I at least go in and seal the floor, then I got the rest of the day. I need to mill up some more cedar logs to make the uh, shelves and benches and all that stuff. So that'll at least be till tomorrow. It'll have to dry 24 hours, that's plenty. You know, if I'm being honest, I think this thing is sweet had no no idea this is what I'd end up building when I started but hey that's kind of the that's the fun of it that's why I don't ever make plans I like to see what just happens organically I can't wait to use it I've had to uh heat some water up here the last couple nights and then take it over to what's left of the old shower there do my clean in there just so I didn't get the floor all wet in here so I'm just gonna try to get some of these black boot scuffs off actually you know I really don't care that much all right well I'll spend five minutes I read the back of the can and it says to specifically to sand a floor that's going to be sealed with 60 to 80 grit sandpaper. And I was thinking, well, I basically sanded this with a chainsaw. So hopefully that's rough enough. The stuff will stick. <laughs> Let's just hope that's what the uh, manufacturer had in mind. I'm listening to uh, James Michener's Alaska, which I've read a couple times. I love his writing, historical fiction. Don't know if you guys have ever read any of it, but uh, I listen to so many books and podcasts that it makes me a little bit crazy to constantly have to stop and find another one or skip through the commercials or whatever. So I love books, especially long books. And this audiobook is 57 hours, <laughs> which I'll listen to in a week anyway. And the good thing, since I've already read it a couple times, I know it's really good, but I got to keep it going. I only got uh, six days left on my loan. I don't know, that was only two and a half minutes, but that looks good enough to me. Yeah, that's heavy. <laughs> that could have been bad. Again, I'm just going to do the part that could get hit by shower water, so... I'll have to do all the, if I decide to seal the rest of this, which I probably won't, uh, I'll do the rest of it later. It's not quite like varnish. It doesn't really make it pop, but it does, uh, does bring out the color a little bit more. It's actually the first thing that I've, uh, sealed out here or finished. I think everything I've made is covered on the outside, at least in cedar, and then I just leave it and... I don't know, some of it's lasted two years, so that's something. Actually, the color changes a lot after a while, and it <clears throat> must be continuing to soak in. This is really rich now. Gosh, this was a great idea, wouldn't it? Yep, that looks great. All right, 
some milling then. I think I'm going to make the benches and the shelves. I kind of want them to look kind of heavy. At least the bench will have to be thick enough that you don't sit on it. It bends or anything, but even the shelves, I'll probably just put one, like two sides and a couple shelves and like put it right on the floor. Maybe screw it into the wall. But it'd look kind of cool if those were thicker than like one inch. So I'll make them at least, at least one and a half. I might have some more one and a half cedar already milled. Something I noticed uh, while I'm staining this, it's amazing how fast this lumber has dried, seasoned and shrunk. I don't know if you can tell how big these gaps are, but that was tight a week ago. Put these up a week ago and they were touching. And even like on that board, the smallest gap is an eighth of an inch. It was really windy and fairly warm and dry. So <laughs> it's really shrinking up. That's crazy. Even the floor in the man cave. So I put the floor in in the fall, maybe a month or so before it started snowing. And those are big fat boards too. So they shrink up a lot more than a little skinny one. But I put the floorboards in and then I caulked it all just a little tiny gap. And then it's been there all winter and it hasn't changed at all. And then the last week and a half, they're probably more than quarter inch gaps in the floor. I mean, it makes sense. You get some warmer, drier weather and it does that. But I just thought like having the heater on in there all winter, I guess I thought that would have dried it out a little bit, but it's really shrinking up now. I'm hoping I can just mill one log. I think we'll make two inch boards for the seat, one and a half for the shelves. I mean, it's not even big enough to put a whole lot of shelves, but two slabs ought to do like a shelf table kind of thing. Right? I think. We'll find out. <laughs> it sounds like in this book, it sounds like he's talking about ringworm. A gross, unplanned, ugly pile of wood built by unskillful men. <laughs> this is the uh, first day that that spring smell is in the air. It smells amazing. It's like sweet and spicy and all things good. I wish I knew what it was, what plant it was that was making that, making that scent. And just in the last three days, green stuff starts. You know, green stuff just comes up out of the ground. I thought by order of the gods, the ground was always white, but I, I guess I'm wrong. And these sawhorses are so close to collapsing. They're weak and spongy, and one of these seconds they're just gonna break off. My brain is. I forgot to peel the log. Ow. You know what? We better see if this thing's pointy enough. Yep, it works. Always got to check. Should we try this again? Wow, that's a nice blonde one very light pretty i might actually have to seal the bench too well this would be yeah this would be the bench and the table shelf table shelves i'll definitely have to seal it so it stays pretty like that
very pretty. All right, I'm gonna finish chopping this up, then we'll get to building stuff. Got some really nice stuff out of that log. So I got a one and a half inch there, one and a half there. These are 12 feet long. That's a two incher for the bench. And then I just ripped off the whatever was left of it. That's a one inch. And there's an odd shaped one inch up there. I'll just throw that in my pile and use it for something later. I do seem to go through an awful lot of one inch uh, cedar boards, so it won't go to waste. <laughs> Alright, let's try out some of that nasty stuff they call thinking. So, I guess I don't know why I'm setting it up this way other than I'm just kind of mirroring what was there and it worked fine. Propane, burner, I guess it does make sense to have the bench on the opposite side of the uh, pot of water so you don't uh, get your stuff all wet. So, bench there and then the only place left I guess is the table along the back wall. We'll see how high that ends up being. You still put some hooks or something up there, maybe for towels. And then I'd still like to get my uh, hook board off of the old shower because it has all the names signed on it. Maybe I'll, I don't know, we'll figure that out later. Maybe just screw it to a wall or something. So let's rip up this uh, big fat two inch board and see what kind of bench we can make out of it. Yeah, that's a, that's a solid one. I guess I'll leave a live edge on the front edge of the bench, so maybe I'll just rip one side of this off and cut it in half and stick it together. Hmm, well, I hope that's dry enough. Actually it is, I rubbed my hand over it a couple spots and it was already dry enough to touch, maybe not to walk on, but <laughs> might end up with a textured floor. Maybe that's a new non-skid thing. It's like organic non-skid. You know what I should really be doing before I'm doing all this finishing stuff? I need to put those corner braces on there so that I can get rid of this thing. This is what happens. This is what happens in my brain. I'm like, ooh, you know what's most fun? And I'll start on that. Like, I could build a cabin and uh, be working on the furniture and the shelves inside before it even has a roof on it. Well, I'm gonna finish working on this stuff today, and then I promise myself, maybe I'll put those, make those braces, and put them on in the morning. Just don't hold me to it. Ooh, that's gonna be a nice fat bench. Yeah, that's gonna be great. Oh yeah, I didn't even figure out how long this is supposed to be. Still gotta cut that off. 67 and a half. Oh, I guess it doesn't matter what the space is for it. We'll just do it as long as this is.
It is too long. What the heck? <laughs> well, luckily I have a couple shortener uppers here. A battery powered one and a gas powered one. I'll just use the electric one. Shortener upper 5000. That will fit. <laughs> oh, there we go. Don't worry, folks, I got it. It'll be fine. Let's give that a go. See if it doesn't fall through the ground. Nope. What do you know? You can sit on it. Wow. I might, I might just live out here. This bench is about three times the size of the one in the old shower. You can, uh, you know, you have Pete's out here. There's a place for the boxes. You can shower with a friend. There's just all sorts of activities you could do in here. Let's see. How do we want to do this? How about, how about a long skinny one right across the top? Just to start, just to kind of wet the whistle. All right, we'll do some bracing, something like that. Maybe, I don't know, four feet-ish. I think I could find a cedar log, maybe that big around, split it down the middle, open it up. I can screw it right to that, and then I'll have to notch this side out. I like notching stuff with a chainsaw. I mean, it's fun to fit it all together. I don't really like it so much when I have to stand on a ladder and do it. I mean, I guess on the upside, I can actually put the ladder on something flat, so maybe it won't be that bad. All right. Four footer. I actually had to take a quick break. I just went and picked up my 22 rifle. I was gonna make a lap of my walking shooting range that I made just for 22 pistols. They're all pretty short shots, but uh, I was standing here and I got a couple other steel targets back in the woods that I could see. So, you know, you expect you're gonna squeeze off one or two rounds and then end up being about 50. I can't wait this evening when it starts cooling down, I'm gonna go out and try my walking shooting range with this and just see if uh, maybe I could shoot two or three targets out. You know, it would also be ridiculous and nonsensical. I should probably put a couple more steel targets out here. So, you know, when I come to take a shower as, oh yeah, as the water's heating up, takes like 10 minutes. I could bring a 22 out here, <laughs> stand in the shower and plink. I like that idea. I'm gonna do that. This one ought to do, don't you think?
thought I did a pretty hack job, but it actually looks pretty good. There's a rumble in. I thought it was a jet. There's like one black spot in the sky over there. It does appear to be coming this direction. Well, this thing should be waterproof. I guess we'll see. There goes the sun. Might be a good one. trying to rain hard it was for a second so far it hasn't leaked I mean it's only been about 13 or 14 raindrops on top of it but no drips this is great I definitely need some targets out here though you know a rainy day I come out here with a sandwich and sit here and do a little plinking it's fantastic maybe I won't use this as a shower it's just be a, a shooter shed Great to have an excuse to just sit here though. Lovely. Check my emails. I try to do that at least once every month or two. Good thing I brought my stuff in here. It's like the hailing. Got a weird for a 70, 72 degree day. Nice and cozy in here. Looks like a normal shower, doesn't it? Whew. Kind of blowing in that side. Holy cow, it's blowing in every side now. Try to remember the rules of ringworm. Never, ever run a chainsaw while you're standing on a ladder unless you want to.
That looks better, doesn't it? I think that should be a lot more solider now. It took a little adjusting, but fits all right. I probably would have normally put the rounded side on the outside and did something different there, but I still want to just make sure that this side is completely flush so I can snap the canvas on whenever I get around to doing it. I'm having flashbacks. I feel like I just did this. Hopefully it's the last time, but I figure I'd put it in there just to make sure I get the shelves and everything in the right spot. There, right there. What do you think? Right there. Okay. I think it'll look a lot fancier if I nip the corners off, don't you think? pretty good that's about three times as much well that's probably double the storage of the old shower but I have one more actually I have two more big one and a half inch boards so I think I'm gonna throw just maybe a narrow board down there narrow shelf before I just screwed it all in. <laughs> well, let's just take a guess here. We'll whack it off with a chainsaw. It's getting awfully nice. What do we got left? Oh, you know what? I kind of need a step. It's actually just about the right height for one step. Uh, I don't really want to build steps. <laughs> for some reason, I have this aversion to building steps. It's like everything I build out here, I build up off the ground, you know, two, three, four feet, and then 
I get done with it, I'm like, man, that's great. Let's go on to the next thing. And I just leave it so you have to climb up there. Ah, uh, oh, actually, I was going to take this thing apart because I want my my uh, nail board in there to hang towels on and my little uh, shaving mirror. I think it was a boat trophy, <laughs> sailing trophy or something. So I'm going to put that in there. That's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to rip that down the middle. I'll get the big chainsaw out and make... Uh, one big fat step out of it. That'll save me from having to find more lumber and do all that thinking and cutting and thinking again. Ooh, yeah. I have to take my frog with me. Many years ago, I started a business making giant fishing lures, like on a lathe. So my dad used to make them and I, I think I tried to get him to do it and I would sell them or something. He wasn't into that. So I bought a lathe and it's basically just cutting dead and downed firewood in the forest. I think that was in Oregon. No, yeah, that was California. Anyway, make some giant antiqued lures like that big. This is the only one that's left and it didn't even get finished. Doesn't have the hook or the lip on it or anything, but it looks cool enough. We better hang it somewhere. Might as well take all this too, huh? This is a very, very important part of living out here. Here you can see what it says use the tick mirror you kind of have to shower every day out here because if you happen to get ticks they really won't spread at least lyme disease they have to be on the ticks have to be on you for at least 24 hours before they can transmit the disease which just means you kind of have to shower every day during the summer just so that you actually take your clothes off and check yourself and that's what the, the mirrors for getting in the crevices those little suckers like to burrow in all sorts of weird places I think it's gonna have to go here. There's not really any other place. The only thing I use this mirror for that's mounted on here is for shaving. And then I put the whole thing over there, but then you're shaving and dripping all over the bench and your clothes and everything. So I think that's, I think this is where it goes. Actually, I'm gonna take this apart and, <laughs> man, when I built this stuff, we were just throwing stuff together. Like I didn't even peel the bark off of any of this. It's not cut off. It's like cut off with a chainsaw horribly. Maybe I'll just pull the screws out and plane some of this down. I think I might have showed you this in the previous video. This is my either my grandfather's or my great-grandfather's draw knife. And it didn't really have a sheath for it. So we've got the really old with the newfangled. I 3D printed this. I actually had to print it in two pieces because the bed on my printers isn't that big. Glued it together right down the middle. The 3D printed all the parts. This plastic is PLA plastic, but they put, um, I think it's really fine sawdust in it. So there's actual wood in that mixed with plastic kind of gives it that color. This is the kind of stuff that I love making with 3D printer. So hopefully in the next couple of weeks, I'll bring it out here and we'll see if we can uh, run it off the battery. I think it'll work. Let's rip this sucker up. I'm gonna try, I just put a, a milling chain on, a newly sharpened one, whenever I milled the last couple boards over there, so it should be pretty sharp. I don't really like to use a milling chain ever on a chainsaw when you're just cutting. It does a lot of weird stuff, but since I'm gonna be ripping this, I'm just kind of curious to see how it works. You know, the grain in the log is running this direction normally when you mill you're milling like this through it so you're kind of cutting end grains normally when you're using a chainsaw you're cutting stuff like this which is across the grains too just in a different direction this is going to be right in line with the grain which is kind of a pain in the butt because it pulls off long strands instead of a dust or chips which tends to just clog the saw up so you kind of go like full throttle and then put no pressure on it just to let it all feed out the back Without getting stuck in there. Let's see what happens. I think we need about, well, let me measure that real quick. 
Yeah, it's about a foot. Let's do a foot. Knock that off. Try to keep the saw real vertical. Then we'll measure over 12 inches. Snap another line and cut that off. The ground's real uneven over there and there's some rocks and stuff, so I don't really know how this is gonna fit, but let's just see what happens. Uh, it came out pretty flat actually that's surprising it was that <laughs> it looks that good i couldn't really see what i was doing with this down and the glare of the sun on it it's like no matter which way i move my face i couldn't see the <laughs> couldn't see the chalk line No sense in planing this, but it's fun to plane grade wood. How could that not be fun? Who's moving this thing? Somebody gonna grab, you're not gonna grab an end. Worthless. That's not bad. This is definitely gonna rot out. <clears throat> Not for a year or two. Maybe by then I'll enjoy making stairs. Oh, that's pretty good. Oh, it's backwards. Stupid. Yeah. Perfect. You don't usually want to seal every side of a piece of wood because then the water can't get out, but something tells me this isn't going to completely seal it and it might keep a little bit of water from soaking in the bottom when it rains. Who knows? We'll see what happens. This is a, definitely not going to last forever. It's just, this is pine, white pine, so a big block of white pine sitting right on the ground is it's going to rot eventually. I just don't feel like uh, milling up more lumber right now just to make steps and this will work for a year or two or who knows how long.
well, can't do anything but let it dry now. Might as well go make a lap or two of the shooting range, eh? There aren't a lot better ways to finish a day. Well, here I am. Thought I was completely done with this. Cleaned it out, put all my tools away last night. And I came out here and the only thing left was to hang up my towel and I realized, I think I overshelled this place. Overshelled? Yeah, I think that's the word. There's not really a towel rack or a good place to hang a towel, so I guess we need to make some towel hangers. Find a little skinny tree and peel it and I don't know, we'll figure something out. There's a nice straight dead one. Little too dead, a little too hollow. There's actually some good stuff further up. Just like the old time woodsman did it. So that's enough for maybe two towels, so maybe two more. How about this? This will work. Again, I'm gonna end up spending most of my time in here out of the rain. Come in here to stay dry or get wet, one or the other. Gotta hold the towel. Since I'm stuck in here for the rain, I might as well seal this, eh? Aw, oh, baby, you know what time it is. Time for a gourmet shower. Gourmet. It is it is with a T. Seriously, when was the last time you saw a shower that looked quite that good? Never, right? Or at least not in the last couple of days. <laughs> Look at this place. I even, uh, even put the shoe shelf back in. 
I found it's good to have a separate spot to put your shoes so you don't set them on the bench and get it all muddy and they also don't get all wet if you just leave them on the ground. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm kind of upper crust, you know, I like things just a certain way. Got my water tower hooked up. I'm gonna have to do some filling up, but my hose is right there hooked to the tower. So there's even running water out here. <laughs> Already got my pot all filled up. And then we just give that a little twisty twist. About uh, 10 minutes or so and you're all set. Oh, it's on like Donkey Kong. When the weather's really cold, I like 103-ish. This time of year, I'm about a 100. We're at 86. Getting close. I know, you're getting nervous right now. You think I'm gonna make you watch this train wreck get all clean? I'll spare you. You uh, may be interested in coming back next week. Uh, I'm gonna drag out the solar panels tomorrow, my huge solar array. See if I can get that big uh, solar frame that I made with all the webbing and uh, I think it was cedar boards that I milled. See if I can uh, actually get it up here by myself somehow. I don't know if that's going to happen. It's going to be ugly. I thought of also, uh, I have to treat all my clothes now that the bugs are starting to come out and all the ticks are crawling around like the little creeps that they are. Thought about doing a little bit of a master class on how to deal with bugs when you're outdoors. There's a lot of tricks I've learned in the last couple of years to, to take care of mosquitoes ticks and spiders there are a lot of all three of them around here and i've gone through every chemical spray clothes treatment fogging all sorts of stuff so thought i might that add that into the video next week as well as always be a big mishmash of stuff and then i promise you except i don't quite promise but i think the week after that i'm going to do a video on 3d printing out here I've got two or three things that I need to design. I'll get the laptop out, design them in CAD, and then we'll see if we can get the 3D printer to run from the uh, Jackery battery. I think it's going to be pretty cool. There are a few things that I get to do out here that I love doing in normal life anyway, and then to do it while I'm out here, like living in a tent in the woods. It's just that much cooler, like 3D printing or like showering in a place like this out in the middle of the woods. It's, it's all right, you know, it's all right. But yeah, setting the 3D printer up in the man cave and printing stuff from solar power is just, oh, it's going to be so much fun. I hope it works. So anyway, thanks for following me along on this build. I'm sure there'll be, there is another real big build coming up soon that I think most of you are really going to be into and probably have wanted to see for a couple of years. So come back if you like. Thanks for watching. I'm going to get naked now, so you might want to just turn your head. <laughs> That was dope.